Good morning, everybody, and welcome to The Morning Routine. It's Friday, September the 29th, 2017, episode number 185. And it's so good to be here with you this morning on this Friday in September, the last Friday in September of 2017. Here we are. We're at the end. Let's see how many days are in 30 days has September. 30 days has September. So tomorrow's the last day. We are about to get into October. How exciting. So September has come. And it's on the way out. So I hope everybody enjoyed their week so far. Today's the last day to get whatever it is that's on that list done, you know, for the week before we jump into the weekend. And then you start the other list of things to do, right? We have like two lists, right? Weekday things and then weekend things. And uh, so today's the last time to, the last day to finish off the weekday thing. So yesterday morning was very cool. When we got done in the morning routine, a friend of my father's that I, I see very, very rarely. I mean, very, very rarely. I mean, years and years go by, right? And he messaged me and in the message, he sent me some three pictures of when I was just a little tiny kid. I probably was two years old, maybe three, but it looks like two to me. I don't, eh, maybe, eh, maybe three years old. And, uh, and uh, with me and my father and my dad looked so young, Oh my gosh, it was really, really cool. What a great gift it was that he sent those to me. It was so cool. And uh, think about framing one of those up and putting it on the wall. And then yesterday after I was done work and I went over and helped a friend who's moving, once again reminded about how much junk we all can accumulate. I went through and purged my, uh, my storage and stuff. Uh, a couple of years ago, we had a yard sale and then it just accumulated again. So this spring I went out and did it again and I was helping my friend and, and the same thing. It's like you hold on to these things like, oh, this is, I can't just throw this away. I know that I'll need this one day. Well, then you end up with a big garage or whatever it is or basement or barn or whatever filled with stuff that you think you're going to need someday. And someday never comes, right? So uh, I don't know. Now it's fall. Maybe it's time to purge a little. That's maybe what you could do this weekend. Purge some stuff. Why not? You know? So, but uh, I got some interesting stories for you this morning. This one, very cool. All right. So let's see here. I want to, where is the uh, thing here? Okay. So the headlines of the story is this, okay? A pile of ocean trash has grown to the size of France. People want to recognize it as a nation. Now, there's a whole lot there in the title of this story. Link will be in the show link so you can read it all in its entirety. It's got a lot of great stuff in it. The point of it being, though, that guys, is that the trash that goes in the ocean, the way the ocean currents flow, there's two areas in the ocean where it kind of just circles. The, 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 the currents go and, and then circle. Well, in one of those areas, the trash has accumulated so much that seriously, it's the size of France, of garbage. Like you can walk on it. It's in like no joke. Okay. So listen to this. There's a country size problem in the North Pacific ocean. A patch of trash has grown to the size of France. So the environmental charity plastic oceans foundation has paired up with the news and entertainment publication led led Bible to camp to campaign for it to be recognized as an official country. Seriously. This is amazing. The campaign claims that under Article 1 of the 1993 Montevideo Convention on the Rights and Duties of States, a country must be able to define a territory, form a government, interact with other states, have a permanent population. The Great Pacific Garbage Patch, patch has borders because it has its line of garbage. It's easy to create a government and institutions for interacting with others. And now with former U.S. Vice President Al Gore signing up as the country's first citizen and more than 100,000 signing the petition to be granted citizenship, the campaign has submitted its application to the United Nations to be recognized as the Trash Isles, which would make them the 196th country in the, uh, in the world. Isn't that fascinating, guys? A pile of garbage could become a country. So... So whenever you're throwing garbage into the ocean, just think, you're building another country. Maybe it's a good thing. It's not. I'm, that was sarcasm. But hey, at least there's some good from it. So next story I've got here. What is this story here? I got to look at this. Oh, listen to this. So billionaires, all right? So the billionaires, super wealthy, successful people, okay? 
Where do they come from? Where do they come from? Of all the billionaires, the first jobs. Here we go. Are you ready? 30 of the billionaires inherit. This is of the 100 richest people in the world. Okay, here we go. 30 inherited or worked for a family business. 17 started their very own business. 53 of them worked for another organization. Now, out of those 53 billionaires that worked for another organization, what did they do? 10 of them were salespeople. Nine were stock traders. Five were engineers. Five were software developers. Four were accountants. Four analysts. Three retail assistants. Retail assistants, guys. Billionaires. Retail assistants. Three of them. Uh, two in construction. Two in the military. Two mechanics. Two legal assistants. Legal assistants. Two legal assistants in the billionaire club. And two were in the marketing. So that is where the top 100 richest people in the world come from. 30 inherited, 17 started their own business, 53 worked for other businesses, and that's the breakdown. If you want to read it again, it'll be in the show, uh, yeah, it'll be in the show links, and you can check that out as well. So very cool. And the last that I have for you, this very engaging uh, story here. It's a long one. You're going to want to go and read it in its entirety to soak it all in. But the gist of it is this, guys. The title of the article from the Washington Post is Not Drinking or Driving, Teens Increasingly Put Off Traditional Markers of Adulthood, which is interesting. So, so I'm just going to read some facts to you and some information, okay? This is a study that was published uh, last week in the journal Child Development found that the percentage of adolescents in the United States who have a driver's license, who have tried alcohol, who date, and who work for pay has plummeted since 1976, with the most, the largest decrease in the past decade. The declines appear across all racial, geographical, and socioeconomic lines and in rural, urban, and suburban areas. So it's not tied to one specific group. Listen to these numbers, guys, okay? So this is a comparison between 1976 and 1979, that time span, okay, and 2010 and 2015, that time span. In 1976-79, 86% of high school seniors had gone on a date. Between 2010-2015, only 63%. 86% down to 63% have gone on a first had gone on a date. High school seniors we're talking about. Uh, during the same period, the portion that have ever earned money for work went from 76% down to 55% portion that had tried alcohol, 93% in 76 to 79 had tried alcohol. In 2010 to 2016, only 67%. This is a major, major drop. Um, teenagers, high school students who have had sex, 54% down to 41%. So this is a major drift. So why, right? I mean, I'm reading this. I'm like, why is this happening? I mean, it's not a it's not a faith thing. It's not the church is growing and because, you know, if you're inside the church walls, a lot of these things, you know, we teach our kids to, to sustain from and to step back from and give your time to mature and that there's the right time for different things, right? And there's laws that we respect, even if we disagree with them, th things like that, right? So it's not that. This is over all groups. People say, oh, it's because teenagers are more responsible. No. Psychology, there's a, psycho, there's a psychological theory that says um, that the person's life strategy slows down or speeds up depending on the person's surroundings. Exposure to a harsh and unpredictable environment leads to faster development. So what they're saying is that right now, students are living in a more resource-rich, secure environment, and so there's no pressure or no push to go and try new things. They would rather be chill at home, hanging out, playing board games, having fun, than going out, drinking beer in the back road, having sex, which is different than the high school years that I grew up in, which was in the, uh, you know, the late 80s, early 90s. So crazy. So very interesting numbers there, guys. Good article if you want to go read it and see those statistics for yourself. Very, very interesting how times have changed in that way. And, uh, you know, us parents, you'd like to chalk it up that we're parenting better. 
I don't think that's the fact. So I think parenting has pretty much been the same forever. So, <laughs> but interesting story. So let's move on, guys. Let's see what's trending. Top 10 most searched things on Google Trends yesterday. Number one, Green Bay Packers. They played last night, which, by the way, they streamed on Amazon Prime. Thursday night games are now streaming on Amazon Prime, which is very cool. Number two, Julia Louise Dreyfus. Number three, Will and Grace. Number four, Gray's Anatomy. Number five, Devontae Adams. Number six, the President's Cup. Number seven, speaking of the President's Cup, big golf match right now going on right outside of Manhattan, which is very cool. Buddy of mine is going there tomorrow, uh, and they're going to go watch the uh, golf match. And I went online to t take a look at the place. Beautiful course. The skyline of, uh, of Manhattan is like right in the background. Absolutely beautiful. Big, uh, big deal. Uh, let's see. Number seven, American Maid. Number eight is Roku. Number nine, Red Dead Redemption 2. And number 10, El Capitan, which is the, uh, the mountain in, uh, whatchamacallit, the state park that crumbled. So uh, that's the top 10 most searched things on Google yesterday. Let's jump on over and see what kind of news stories are trending today. Top of the list, Merchant Marine Act of 1920. Trump waives Jones Act for Puerto Rico effective immediately. I'm not sure what that act does, though, um, but sounds important. Next we have... Oh boy, Prabhadeva, Prabhadeva Railway Station. No, that's the wrong. Mumbai Stampede, death toll goes up to 22 in rush hour tragedy at Peril Ethistone Road Overbridge. Oh man. Next we have Puerto Rico, drinking water crisis grips Puerto Rico in wake of Maria. Next we have Prince Harry. This little girl stole Prince Harry's popcorn. I saw that yesterday. There's a video. He was at some event. I don't, I don't know. Don't know what it was. And there's a little girl that was like eating right out of his bag of popcorn. It's pretty cool. Uh, next, White House. White House opens internal investigation into personal email use. Then we have Lambeau Field. Packers Bears stand uh, during anthem before NFL game. Then, then we have Tom Price. Trump Health Secretary to repay cost of private jet travel. Then we have Yosemite National Park. That was the park I was trying to remember where El Capitan is. Yosemite rock slide slides cause another injury. Roads rerouted. And last but not least, Gary Cohn. Gary Cohn apparently doesn't know what things cost. Okay. Good for you, Gary Cohn. Or bad for you. Either way. I don't know. So, But that's what's trending on the news. Let's move over, guys. And let's check out a passage of wisdom today. Let's see what we've got uh, on our passage today. We have... Oh... This is a good one. Okay, guys. One verse. Very simple. Today's passage is Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are. Yet, he did not sin. Pretty amazing. So this is talking about Jesus, and it says, we do not have a high priest, meaning Jesus, who is unable to empathize with our weakness, not sympathize, but empathize, right? Sympathy is having sympathy for somebody, but not really knowing how, what they're going through. Empathy is that you really know what they're going through, right? Uh, empathize with our weakness, but we have one who has been tempted in every way. Jesus walked on earth and was tempted in all the same ways that we were, yet he, uh, just as we were, yet he did not sin. It's amazing that we have somebody, a God in heaven that we can pray to and ask for help and ask for strength and, and ask for forgiveness. And he knows exactly what it is that we went through, right? Or going through right now. Yesterday's passage, we talked about a young lady who was, who was sobbing in despair because she'd been, she'd been uh, left by her friends and betrayed. Guess what? He was betrayed. He knew exactly what she was feeling in that passage. Exactly, because he was the same way. His best, one of his best friends betrayed him, right? He was wronged by so many people. He was stoned. He was rocked. He was spit upon. He was tempted by Satan, right? When he was starving up in the, I mean, uh, he knows exactly what it is that we go through day to day because he has been there. He has lost a best friend in death, right? I mean, he wept. He knows exactly what we're going through. And this is the God that we have the joy of being able to turn to in the times of joy and the times of tribulation for us. 
And uh, that's awesome to be able to have a God like that. It's not just a statue who's never been here or whatever it is. It's been somebody who was, could have been standing right next to us at one point in history. So, fantastic. All right, let's pray. And let's get this day started. Father, good morning. Father, I want to thank you for this Friday, this last Friday in September 2017. I want to thank you for this month that you've given us, a month to hug our family, to, uh, to have friends and enjoy conversation, to work hard, to chase after you, to grow, to, to, to work on what our purpose is and to move forward towards it, to encourage other people, just to breathe the fresh fall air and see the gorgeous sun and mist coming off the mountains in the water, the beauty that you've created out there for us to enjoy. Father, I want to thank you for all of those great things that you have given to us. None of them can we expect day to day, but each day it's a joy to wake up and have those right outside our door. Father, I want to thank you for this passage of wisdom today and encouragement that you are there with us and you know exactly what it is we're going through when we're, in, when we're having a great time and, Father, even when we're in despair, when we've been betrayed, when we've been spit upon when we've been wrong, when we've lost a friend, when we're, in, when we're in despair, you know exactly what it is that we are feeling because you yourself have gone through those emotions as well. Father, I thank you for that, that encouragement. Father, be with us today as we go out and we enjoy this Friday and into the weekend, the last days of this month. Give us the strength to be encouragement to other people. Give us the strength to be your hands and feet. When somebody today right now, Father, is praying that they need you and they need your love and they just, where are you? Let us be your hands and feet that show up with encouragement and a smile and a hug for those people who are praying and asking right now. And we don't know who they are, Father. We don't know who that person, we could walk right by them today. Make it clear to us. Make it obvious so that we can be that person and have that joy of helping somebody out in their time of greatest need. Father, we love you that we get to be part of your story and that you are part of ours. Be with us today. Amen. And that, my friends, is a magnificent wrap. I'm so glad that you guys were here for this week on The Morning Routine. I hope that you enjoy your weekend to the fullest. And until Monday morning when we're back here again on The Morning Routine, don't forget to be exactly who you are. We're meant to be. I love you guys. Have a great weekend.